Uh, rainforests are so crucial to our own survival in many more subtle ways than what we actually know now. Hey Tribe, Stephanie Dixon here for Green is a New Black TV and we are here at Wonderfruit. It is day three, I've lost my voice, but we are still going strong. I'm joined with David Gavu, who is from the Center of International Forestry Research. So David, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. I'm a scientist and what I do is I track uh, forest destruction using satellites because currently we're having this big problem in Southeast Asia loses rainforest faster than anywhere else in the world because of one industry which is the global supply chain of palm oil. The global supply chain of palm oil is a very murky business. The idea is that companies cannot go on forever destroying the environment. They have got an environmental footprint and they uh, need to clean that up because consumers are asking this. They don't want to buy things that is tainted by slavery, deforestation, child labor, you name it, you know, all the bad things. So they know they need to go down that way, but because companies are who they are, they're not doing this for, um, for the environment, but they're doing this because they know it will mean otherwise they'll lose money, then we need to have watchdogs. We need to um, be empowered, we need to have information to uh, essentially know if what they say they're doing is indeed happening. And we're providing the sorts of data that will give the evidence, and uh, we're making it online, public access, anyone can, can, can see this, uh, for essentially consumers to um, have the information, the evidence, to then be able to make a decision whether to continue buying this or that product based on whether it's been a cause of, in our case, rainforest destruction or not. Yeah, that's really fascinating. It's amazing that you have that technology. So you're harnessing technology to empower individuals and to empower consumers, but also ensure that, as you said, like the watchdog, there's someone watching so we can really be accountable and the companies can be accountable for their actions. So on a personal level, though, why do you do this? So what is it that sparked it in you, this passion from the beginning? Personally, it goes back to the days when I was a kid. I've always loved, you know, nature. I asked myself, is this possible to do something that I really love doing at the same time as be able to make a living? And so I ended up doing this, this job. I wake up in the morning and I go to work and I feel like I've got a sense of purpose and I love my job. So for me, I'd say it's almost been a vocation since when I was a, when I was a kid. I just want to see rainforests and all the wildlife that's within them conserved for, for our future generations. But also, as a scientist, I, I'm trying to explain wh why are rainforests so important. We're also doing research which tends to show that rainforests, if we lose them, we, we cannot survive because uh, rainforests are so crucial to our own survival in many more subtle ways than what we actually know now. And I'll just give you one particular example that rainforests are um, particularly tropical rainforests are our source of fresh water, uh, therefore of uh, drinking water and food security. In a sense that without rainforests, we don't have rainfall on land. Land will turn into deserts. Rainforests, by virtue of uh, uh, transpiration, emit so much water vapor in the sky that they are. Um, creating the conditions for rain and without them we would not be able to survive. People don't really understand this. When, we, when you look at the island of Borneo that we've been studying a lot, we've looked at 40 years of deforestation using uh, a, a number of satellite data. We've also looked at the, uh, the rainfall patterns and guess what, as much as at the same time as rain, uh, Borneo's lost 30% of its original forest cover back in the 1970s, it's also lost 25% of its annual rainfall, which means that if you lose your rainforest, you're also losing your rainfall, it means that you're losing your drinking water and you have no food security. So it goes beyond protection of wildlife, it goes beyond this, it really it means that rainforests are so essential to our own survival that without them we can't survive. Yeah, but we talk about rainforests as like the lungs of the planet. They're the lungs of the planet. The earth breathes through the rainforest. Yes. So if 
we're distracting them, then they're not going to be any less. So, what what is actually being done? So, I mean, how far along are we? Like, is it is it savable at this point? You know, sort of where are we at? Like, and what can people do? Like on an individual level as well. What can we do? There's no silver bullet in the sense that it's a very intricate problem. It's, it involves politics, it varies by country, whether the country is developed or not. I have a lot of faith in consumer power. One person, one voice, your money is power. Uh, your voice is, your is power. Vote with your wallet. Be more mindful of what you buy. This perhaps is one way to save the forest. I'm not saying that this is the only way. I personally think that we need to consume less at the same time as we do this. Buying uh, in a more responsible way, I think, goes hand in hand with buying more durable products, more locally produced, um, and so somehow start bypassing the whole industrial global supply chain of agricultural products. Consume better and less and vote with our wallets. And vote with our wallets. So what would Mother Nature say right now if she could speak? Well, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> Mother Nature will be here a thousand or two thousand years from now. We might all be extinct. Uh, if we continue down that unsustainable path, Mother Nature also cares for us. After all, we are part of Mother Nature, right? So let's, let's try to do this. Uh, obviously, we're at this beautiful festival where we're really bridging the gap between social environment responsibility and fun. So how have you found it and, you know, kind of what do you think is special about this? Yesterday I, and, and today I, I attended a number of talks at the Rainforest Pavilion and I was surprised to see that there were actually a high turnaround of people. Mm. That it, it, it didn't empty, it was always people listening to the talks. Which to me suggests that even though people are actually coming here to have fun, they also uh, find an interest in, in all these important environmental issues that we've heard about yesterday and today. Absolutely. And so to me it means that this is proof that there's, there's a lot of hope. There's a, there's a lot of people who, who are connected to these to these problems and, mm. and they want to know and they want to be informed and they will take that knowledge and then they'll spread it around to... to yes, it's very inspiring. It's very there's inspiring. Like that, that sense of thirst of knowledge and they're taking that on and then they're going to hopefully take action to you know implement a lot of that and spread the word as you, as yes. you said. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll end off with your, your favorite wedge of wisdom or your, your life mantra. Do what you have to do to be happy and do good around you. Mm. You know, for a better like world. It. Well, thank you so much, David, and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you learned something today so you can leave more consciously tomorrow.